The OG Magnum from Halo 1 has arrived, and we kinda knew about this since a leak dating all the way back showed a number of potential items showing up in Destiny at some point. No one knew if this was true or not until content shown from the leak started to show up and, well, here we are. Now, this weapon ladies and gentlemen absolutely wrecks in both PvE and PvP, and feels more like a hand cannon with great zoom rather than a sidearm. The Forerunner is a 200 RPM sidearm that can 3 to 1 type minor to ultra combatants you face via body or a single headshot, and does extra damage via critical hits on unshielded combatants from the exotic perk called Fort Stop. With how this weapon is designed, it feels more like a PvP weapon with tight ADS and sticky aim with lethal shots. However, it can also fit in well when using PvE, as that crit damage is incredibly powerful against champions and the like. So to thank Bungie for the new gun, I created a build that will heavily invest in the sidearm and provide a 35% sidearm buff via the surprise attack buff, and a 42.5% connected damage buff via the Whisper of Vending status ability. Both these will be active from one another, but they will not stack unfortunately. However, you're going to be getting a big damage for a little action either way, but this will overall allow your magnum to feel more like a golden gun rather than a simple exotic. At the same time, you'll be offered room to further expand and further build with other unique pairings of gear to become the ultimate gun in Destiny. Now if that doesn't cause you to start frothing at the mouth with joy, then watch the rest of the build and I'll show you the quickest way to that. So like usual before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then I'd really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. So for the subclass, we'll be using Shade Binder with the exotic of choice being Claws of Aaron Karen, so we can use double penundial Blast as we like. Now the idea I had for the build was to utilize stasis as much as I can so we can get a constant 42.5% buff or the 35% buff on a constant basis and then use the damage to how we see fit. For this, we can easily do this by opting into using our melee and our grenades to plot this stasis connect buff via the whisper of rendering for that extra damage and then through the power of Glacial Harvest for the Stasis Shards, Elemental Charge for the Elemental Well benefit, and the Elemental Shards that will turn our shards into wells, you can then make Surprise Attack mod also active when the time comes, and everything basically falls in place from there. You want to make sure you're using Dust Field Grenades as they have become the number one go-to Stasis Grenades with its fast cooldown rate, and from here we can use that fast cooldown rate to create grenades and Stasis Shards in the making. We want to make sure we are getting as much shards from the combat as possible since it's going to be providing a round the clock buff, so make sure you use the Whispers of Fish's perk to make your shatter damage a lot more quicker and deadly in the process. It's also recommended that you use Ice Flare Bolts as well, as it can bounce from one combatant to another and save you time with needing to refreeze combatants and have a long duration to them. Do be aware that if you choose Stasis Turret, you're going to need to get rid of the other artifact in mind, where both have their pros and cons to how their build works. I then recommend you have the Whisper of Refraction so that you can gain back class energy when you need to quickly heal or damage depending on the rift used, and then have the Whisper of Torment so that every time you get damage you'll be getting a bit of grenade energy back. This can be swapped out for something like Whispers of Bond for super energy or even Whispers of Rhyme for the over shields considering that the shards will be dropping often and we can use that increased survivability even more. Now from here, the weaponry, I went with a handful of perks that will grant me more buffs and debuffs as I played along and this may ring true with you if you want to get the best benefits of the build as well. My secondary for example is the BXR 55 with Demolitionist and Iron Storm which will grant me bonuses to accuracy while the health is low and more grenade usage if I get kills with said weapon. Now depending on how high your discipline stat is and how much mods you have available that will be focused on your grenades, you may not even need to invest further with this stat and can also opt into using something else that will be more impactful. I only recommend you use the demo perk if your discipline stat is at 50 to 70 as the cooldown available will be enough for passive play but not enough to where you need it the most. If you have above 70 though, I'd recommend you use a weapon with the Disruption Break perk as that will provide a 50% kinetic damage bonus that will extremely improve the performance of our already amazing sidearm at work. Truth Teller, the grenade launcher, can get that perk and is a great 1-2 weapon that has high potential with the sidearm. Alternatively, any fusion rifle of your choice can also pair well with the weapon as you can add on the Particle Deconstruction mod for that sweet debuff bonus as well. Heavy now is kind of a hit and miss with the build as you're mainly going to be using your primary or secondary to output the most damage. So you can go the simple route and use a linear such as Reach with Vorpal and instead use that to damage champions and bosses alike while also using the Parkour Deconstruction mod to debuff combatants and allow your other weapons to become heavy weapons in the making. 
That or a simple rocket launcher of your choice will make a fine addition. But nonetheless, your build is practically complete once you have your primary and secondary finalized. Now the stats and mod section are going to be important with keeping the build uptime going from start to finish. You'll want to have a high discipline and melee so we can get those fat juicy bonuses going at any time you like. Now when I talk about high stats, I mean at least 70 and above as we want to have these abilities freely accessible even when we are out of energy to get them. And passively, they will regen at their own rate but thanks to our elemental world mod, we can push this to recover in mere minutes if done correctly. So firstly, your discipline should be aimed at around 70 to 100 if you can as your grenades are going to be used against minor to bosses at all times. Now we won't be using elemental ornaments to create worlds as instead we're going to be using these shards we create as worlds via the elemental shards mod. This will turn all of our shards into worlds and they will work in the same manner as them being collected so we'll be granting us energy to all of our abilities. From here you'll then want to have the impact induction mod so every time you melee a combatant you're going to be getting grenade energy back from doing so. This mod is going to be linked back into your melee and the Ahamkara claws which will provide us with two melee charges instead of one. This may sound lackluster for Nozotic, but this will actually yield you a lot of uptime with your sidearm in terms of damage as you can quickly create shards when you need them most or you can use your melee to freeze a button and get a quick damage bonus whenever you want to. Remember, both a melee and grenades will be working hand in hand with each other and will be supporting each other so that your benefits will always persist. Your melee now should then be aimed at 80 as this is the one stat that will see a lot of action as well but doesn't need to have a hefty amount of support to push it forward. Like I said earlier, the Elemental Shard mod is generally all you'll need for this section as it will be covering such a wide area of use. You can add in the Radiant Line mod for that plus 20 in strength instead if you want to save on stat distribution or you can add in the Midi Kickstart mod if your gauntlets are stasis. Those are easier ways to save on ability energy and mod usage all around. Leftovers, we have Sidon Finder times 2 so we can always have ammo when we need it most and Fondle Wisdom so that we can passively get our super up and ready at a passive rate of recharge. We then have this Prize Attack mod for that extra bonus in Sidon damage the moment we come charged with light, Fusion Rifle Scavenger and Sidon Scavenger mod for even more ammo as trust me you're going to be using your Sidon and Fusion a lot and then lastly we have the Power Core Deconstruction mod for that bonus debuff damage you'll also love. Now, as I've covered the mods, weapons and perks we are using, here's what it's all like compiled into one. For head, we have discipline, side on finer times two and frontal wisdom mod. Arm, we have discipline, impact induction and elemental charge mod. Chest, we have discipline, concussive stamina times two and surprise attack mod. Leg, we have strength, side on scavenger, trade five scavenger and elemental charge mod. Bond, we have discipline and particle deconstruction mod. So yeah, when doing the side on build, you can pretty much go anywhere you like with it as it doesn't require you to play within a certain parameter or style to achieve the fun of the build. You've got a single sidearm that's capable of pulling off at least 20k plus damage which can be sustained through two different methods and both methods will be active so there won't be any delay in activation fee, although both damage stacking methods don't stack sadly as if they did then this weapon would be able to take out a raid level boss in a matter of seconds. You then have the unholiest amount of grenade and melee energy free flowing for you that you can turn, use it to stop combatants from charging at you, or even make a snowman if you wish. The build is definitely up there with the likes of Devil Runes in terms of pure raw power that it can offer from simply being charged and take out a ultra lower combatant within a full magazine. You can even compare this to Ariana's Val in terms of damage since they are near identical but far different from each other. Running such a build in, say, massive content is doable since everything provided is a great counter for slowing everything down and just one shard is capable of doing a lot more damage compared to a weapon with Vampage or Kill Clip etc. On top of this, we can also improve the Surprise Attack mod by attaching the Charged Up mod for even more weapon uptime if we choose. This may result in a selected mod being removed but as shown you won't lose too much and you can always refill the area by optimizing it with something else that can grant bigger and better benefits such as protective light which if you're going to be running this in master content you're really going to want that mod available. It's simply put it, the build is a powerhouse against everyone you face but at the same time will offer you room to switch out aspects, perks and even mods to enhance the weapons experience even more. I have seen players use chromatic fire exotic for more explosions and link that into mods to gain worlds as they go. 
while others have used the cast iron armlets for a constant health regen while freezing the battles in a frenzy close range fight. Whatever you do, do give the side arm a try as just like many builds you can build on the current knowledge you are aware of and experiment until you practically get a good feel around the weapon. Or you can become a ODST, I've heard those are the rage these days. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter, keep up to date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.